do, get there with Continental tires and improve your grip with extreme contact traction. Continental Tire, for what you do. Each year, the NSCAA puts over 7,000 coaches through our coaching education program. Youth, high school, and college coaches at all levels participate in the diploma courses. No matter where you are in your coaching path, we have something for you. Join your peers and get educated. Better coaching, better players, better game. NSCAA Coaching Academy. Improving soccer, one coach at a time. Register today at nscaa.com slash education. You can visit and remind you that the broadcast of this match is authorized by the National Soccer Coaches Association of America. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of any image, sound, account, or description without the express written permission of the NSCAA is strictly prohibited. Here in Athens, Ohio, home to Ohio University and the E.W. Scripps School of Journalism, with Miami on top of Ohio by a score of one to nothing. That's the Convocation Center and the basketball team plays there. There's also dorms, classes as well. Pretty good basketball program over the years, including Gary Trent. All right, we've been telling you all about this NSCAA Ohio U European Coaches Tour. Mark Doner put together a pretty nice look at the sights and sounds. a score of five to one and it looked a little bit like this. Next, we went to France, and the French team knocked off Honduras by a score of three to nothing. Actually, watched the game at the Federation. <laughs> then we were in Belgium, the sweethearts of the World Cup. Belgium actually would go on to knock off the USA. Finally, Germany would win the World Cup. Great people, and they enjoyed every minute. Of course, all brought to you by the good folks of the NSCAA and NSCAA TV, where the message is learn, participate, belong. We're in Athens, Ohio, and all of those students that were a part of it, it was indeed incredible. And of course, it couldn't have been done without the collaboration of Joe Cummings, the fine CEO of the NSCAA. And how about Dr. Robert Stewart? He's the director of the E.W. Scripps School of Journalism. And I talked to him about this wonderful trip and that collaboration before the game. Dr. Stewart, an incredible summer with these young kids. Now they're here today. They're behind the cameras. They're on camera. They're doing everything. How proud does that make you feel? It's a great day. Uh, it's been a great build up to this day. Obviously, the summer program is phenomenal for our students, and we're just incredibly proud of what they're doing in the, in the world of soccer media. We just saw the sights and sounds from the trip to Europe, four countries. It was amazing. When you talk to the kids after the trip, what they have to say? 
You know, what they realized was how special an opportunity this was. And, and for them, you know, with all the pressure, all the deadlines, I mean, they were still able to, to take it in. Um, obviously, they're on deadline uh, a lot of that time. They're, they're under a lot of pressure to do a good job because they want to make the school look proud and they want to do a good job for themselves. So they come back a little changed from that experience. Now, at EW Scripps School of Journalism, it's all about real life experience. That's a Sorry. perfect example. That's been important to you. It's, it's always important. You know, I, whenever I talk to prospective students, I go through the official curriculum and then I talk about the shadow curriculum. And uh, in high school, they're in school about 30 to 35 to 40 hours a week. In college, it's about 15 hours a week. And so they have time to do all these hands on media projects and uh, programming and the post and all these great media outlets and if they don't do them they are missing out so we push that push that push that finally you talk about soccer you work with the NSCAA you work with US soccer you want Ohio U and specifically the journalism school to become the soccer experience that's right you know what may not be uh, even known to you is I grew up playing soccer in Thailand as a son of a missionary family so when I would come back to America, nobody played soccer when I, where I came back to. So now it's phenomenal to see the sport that I grew up playing becoming such an important part of our school's experience. Dr. Bob, I'm thrilled to be back. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Wonderful. We're very proud of you too, Dean. All right. I do appreciate that. Let's go now to Billy Hartman, who's standing by with the president of the NSCAA, George Perry. George Perry here, president of the NSCAA. First of all, great to see you again. Now, we had a great time with you with all the other coaches over in Europe. What was your takeaway from that experience? Well, the best part was the work that you folks had done of getting the information out about the trip. And we've certainly heard from a lot of our members about their excitement of doing future trips and hope that we'll be putting more of things together just like that. So it was a, it was a tremendous opportunity for our membership uh, and something that we hope will grow uh, for everyone's opportunities. So you're here now at Ohio University. How does it make you feel to see all of the students who went to Europe have such a key role in today's broadcast? Well, it's tremendous. In talking with Dean Linky earlier, I mentioned it was kind of like a soccer coach where you do all this work uh, prior to the game and then you, the players put all the work and the coach, you just sit back and then you will hopefully watch the game and hopefully all the work that they've done pays off in, in good results. Well, that's what's happening. We saw all the work that you guys do behind the scenes, um, preparing articles, preparing your clips, everything like that. And the viewers get to watch it on TV and, and, and see the, the results of all that. So it's great seeing it on both sides of it. And uh, we're, we're extremely happy to have you folks part of the NSCA and everything that we do. And you're a pretty busy man, George. Kind of get us up to speed with what's all transpired during your presidency. Well, we've been doing a lot with our um, NSCA uh, governance restructuring, and so we've kind of uh, consolidated our board of directors a little bit starting this coming January. Uh, but with that, we've also added an advocacy council, uh, which hopefully will be more representative of our membership and opportunities for membership to get involved with the governance of the NSCA. So we're excited about that, and, uh, and I believe we're going to be announcing pretty soon uh, some more online education offerings uh, for members and non-members um, that will be able to help uh, give them better opportunities of things to do with their players at home and in their training sessions. So uh, it's an exciting time for the NSCA and, and all of soccer in, in the states, and um, you know we're happy to be a, a driving force with that. And finally, George, the NSCAA convention is coming up here in January in Philadelphia. Why should all coaches, both young and old, attend this convention? Well, it's an opportunity uh, for coaches of all levels to learn something new, uh, to meet other uh, coaches from their own age groups, different age groups. Uh, it's the opportunity for the U6 and U8 coach to, to rub shoulders with the professional, national team coaches. Um, everyone's there. Uh, we have presenters from all over the world coming in, uh, so it's an opportunity to learn what to do with the five and six year olds to the you know top level travel competitive high school and college players. So everything's there, it's a great environment um, and, and certainly an opportunity for everyone to, to grow what they do with the game. Well, George, again, great seeing you, thanks so much. And after the break, we'll have more stats and breakdowns, so keep it right here on NSCAA TV. I knew that I wanted to come to Ohio University from the very first time I visited here. There's something about the campus that grabs you. It was really comforting. Very welcoming. It's one thing to write down your name and your GPA and that kind of stuff and send it in. It's another thing entirely to be here and see how great it is. The campus here is just electric. Absolutely gorgeous. Everything just looked really college-like. I looked at my mom and I said, this is it. And she said, the tour's just started. I said, no, you don't understand. This is it.
At Ohio University, investing in the top priority, academics, is the key to success in the classroom and, in turn, competition. Ohio Athletics has announced a campaign for academic excellence, and the focal point of that is a proposed 10,000-square-foot academic center to be built beyond the north end zone at Peaton Stadium. Invest in students. Invest in academics. Invest in Ohio Athletics. Give to the campaign for academic excellence today. I had a coach named uh, Ziggy Smith. Uh, he got a hold of me at 18 years old. It, it was great for me because, you know, he was strict on us, he was strong with us, but he was very fair. I have to make time for the things I want to do. I want to get better at my sport. I have to take some time, set time aside and do that. Uh, really taught me about the game in general, the tactics, you know, how to watch a game, how to see a game. A lot of the lessons I learned from Ziggy, I kept with me throughout my whole career. It, it was good because I, you know, I, I always wonder what my path would have been like if I had a different coach. See what you're made of. You had a coach under 12s before. Can't you have? You're not a team. You don't deserve to be a team! Sorry, I showed you that. It's not just about football. It's about dreams. Welcome back here to Athens, Ohio. Billy Hartman is standing by with OU coach Aaron Rodgers. Coach, down one nothing at the half. What's something you have to work on to pull out this win? I think the biggest thing for us was our energy. You know, they were we were always second best to the ball, and that was something that we talked about. And we were great at Friday night, and we talked about today having to, to be proactive in, in the game and, and get forward faster, control the ball in the attacking third, and take our chances, and I think we'll be able to get back in the game. Thanks so much, Coach, and good luck. Oh, Dean? All right, thank you so much here. The score is one nothing, and we're getting ready to start the second half here from Athens, Ohio. The Bobcats in all black, and Miami in white. Dean Linky along with Allie Dosman, Billy Hartman, Kelsey Steele on the sideline. Thank Justin Holbrook as well, Jimmer Eckhart. Mark Doner, Stephanie Gort, Kate Hiller, Kellen B. Coates. That's the whole crew. Pretty the good whole crew. Gang. Yep. And it was good to hear Aaron Rodgers get his give his thoughts here on what it's going to take. It'll roll out of bounds and throw in back to the Bobcats. Just so you know, Miami had 11 shots in the first half, Ohio four. Both teams had three corner kicks. Ohio had four saves, Miami two. The fouls were five for Ohio, four for Miami. Those are your first half stats. Of course, the biggest stat, though, the goal in the third minute by Miami as Ohio trying to start the second half the way Miami started the first with a goal right in front of the Bobcats kept alive. It's Molesky, Lexi Molesky. She is a busybody for sure, Allie. Yeah, she definitely is. We said her name the entire first half. She was running all over the place. She started off at right mid, moved to forward, and it looks like she started off at forward again for this half. Sasha Haberchak with the foul, slowing down the counterattack of Miami. A name we didn't say very much in the first half was Kelsey Dingus. Aaron Rodgers said earlier this week that they were just kind of going to take a committee approach with her and not really put anyone on her man marking, and it definitely seemed to work in that first half. Yeah, Dingus comes in with eight goals and three assists. Second team all-conference a year ago, and Bobby Kramig, the 32-year head coach at Miami, calls her, in his mind, the best player in the MAC, a league that's got some really good players. Haley Walter, number five. Trying to get it in the 18. Miami played into space. A little push, a little shove, and it'll come back to Ohio. We'll try to show you the goal in the game. Let's take a look at it here. It came in the third minute as Maggie Scott able to take this ball from Haley Walter. Yeah, she was just wide open there with that header. She was able to push off of the Ohio defender, make herself some room, and find the back right side of the net. And with that no. kick, it looked like it was 
Lauren Kelly, and there it is again, just Maggie Scott finding the back of that net, pretty clinical. Yeah, Haley Walter with the assist. And it's one nothing. just a few minutes in here to start the second half. Kelly Dosman, who went to Maryland before Athens, Ohio, and we're delighted that you came to Ohio, but you certainly know all about the great soccer tradition at Maryland, the crew, Ludwig Field, they love their soccer. Yeah, they get a great turnout for their men's and women's soccer. They're typically both in the top ten. It was great to see those games out there. I, was, I went to two games that were both in the top five in attendance for the record at Maryland. It was pretty fun. Back across. Oh, dangerous there as Miami came out a little bit too early. Maniachi uh, looks like she misjudged that and had to go back leaning into goal. You never want to do that as a goalkeeper. Yeah, it looks like Ohio's already coming out with that energy that Aaron Rodgers was looking for. That was a dangerous chance. Knocked out of bounds. It'll be a throw in back to Miami. Aaron Rodgers and the bench of Ohio like what they see here to start. We mentioned Allison Whitworth over there, Elizabeth Worley, Nicole Varney. Red Hawks just bomb this one long. Boy, give Ohio credit. The first five minutes, they have been the better team here to start the second half. Yeah, they've definitely come out with some energy. They've been able to not only have possession, but make some dangerous chances. But the key will just be, honestly, finding the back of the net. And I think that momentum will really help them as well. If you're just tuning in, senior defender Gabby Hosfeld, who played in all 20 games a year ago and really has played ever since she came into camp, tore her ACL on Friday night in that 1-0 win over Ball State. And your heart goes out to Gabby for sure. Yeah, definitely got a feel for that season ending injury her senior year. So you got to keep an eye on number eight, Annie Beard. She's another senior out there that is already a leader, but going to especially have to step up in their leadership position without the Ohio captain. Here come the Bobcats trying to tie it. Inside the 18 here in the first five for at least the third time, but not able to put it in. Yeah, I don't think that was the shot that Sasha Havercheck wanted to get off. Needs a little bit more power on that. Miami. Marble. Marble will cross at far post, trying to find number 15, Kate Zalar, who was making that run. Miami will win it back. Haley Walter, number five, has been busy on that right side. She couldn't get to it. One back by Ohio. Here come the Bobcats. It was Jeggers who got that one started for Ohio. Number 25, Hannah Jeggers, the freshman, is in there now for the Bobcats. Aaron Rodgers was just telling us the other day about how she's pretty similar to Carly Manso. She's really good at holding players off and making that turn, so she works pretty good with Lexi Molesky up there up top. One back here by Miami. Shot from distance, deflected, and able to run it down, though, is Nicole Amari, the senior from Vernon Hills, Illinois. Big shoes to fill, replacing Maddie Lisbon, who, as we said in the first half, holds all the goalkeeping records here in Athens, Ohio, and among the leaders in the Mid-American Conference. But she'll get her senior campaign, and she's getting the minutes under Aaron Rodgers. She has 64 saves so far this year, which is third in the MAC. She's definitely stepped up as a first-year starter. The Bobcats on the turn. Here comes Ohio. Jeggers has looked good here starting the second half for Aaron Rodgers. He dances around. Nice move by Jeggers. It goes off of the head right there of Zanotti. Back again. And handled by Maniachi. Vic Maniachi, the sophomore from Chesterfield, Michigan, wears number zero. But really, it was double zero 
Courtney Zanotti that was able to get in the way on the initial attack there for Miami. It was a great play by Jeggers on that sideline. Aaron Rodgers has had his eye on her since he was coaching at Kentucky and kept up the recruiting on her when he switched to Ohio. The great Mark Doner now on camera down on the field. Delighted to see Mark Doner who put together the sights and sounds and he's showing you some of the sights and sounds here now from the field in Athens, Ohio. And here was Miami, a little bit of a foul from behind. That's what this kick was called off of. Looks like Frasic got a little bit too aggressive from behind. So a great opportunity here now for Miami. They lead at 1-0, looking for that second goal. Snapped right there by Bronke. The holding mid will come forward. And a great shield, though, by Amari. It'll be a goal kick for the Bobcats. They trail at 1-0. It's the NSCAA-TV College Soccer Special coming to you Sunday afternoon from Athens, Ohio, homecoming weekend. Miami leads Ohio by a score of 1-0. The only goal of the game coming from Maggie Scott in the third minute off the free kick from Haley Walter. Scott's third goal of the season. Ohio's had a couple chances here in the first half and early to start the second. The Red Hawks. You know, Aaron Rodgers was talking to us a little bit about how he didn't want to play too much into the rivalry and get people too nervous because in this own in, in this game's own right, it's a huge game because Miami is second in the MAC East. They're having a pretty prolific year, so the fact that Ohio's been hanging in there ever since they let go of that first goal is pretty impressive. Miami. Dancing around. Hey, you guys ready for Steph? All right, as that ball rolls out of bounds, let's go down to Billy Hartman, who's standing by with Stephanie Lynn Gord, Miss Social Media Director. Thanks, Dean. Stephanie, we had a lot of fun over the pond over there in Europe, but it was also a lot of work. Kind of tell us, what did your job entail? Yeah, Billy, so I had to constantly update the NSCA's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram during our course during our group travels and activities. But the best part about the social media work was getting the World Cup perspective from our NSCA fan of the games. You know, it was really great just seeing how a diehard soccer fan truly sees the World Cup abroad in Europe. Now, Dean, something that people might not know is while we were all getting our beauty sleep over there in Europe at night, there was many sleepless nights for Miss Gord as she was trying to upload all the content to the web, but she did a great job. She did an incredible job, and so good to see her smiling face here in Athens, Ohio. She can bring a smile to any face for sure, Ellie Dosman. Always a bright bundle of cheer, Stephanie Gort. You couldn't tell she wasn't getting any sleep when you <laughs> talked to her because she was always the peppiest person on the trip. Well, maybe you could tell a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Miami. Went it back for a second. Now here's Ohio. Ohio. Trying to run it down. Inside the 18, on the turn. Good no call from the referee. Played back top of the 18. Now they'll get it wide. The Bobcats knocking at the door. Can they get the equalizer here in the Battle of the Bricks? Cleared out by Miami. Miami could counter. Numbers fairly even right now. A little push from behind by Ohio, and it'll go back to Miami. A little push there again from Megan Niebuhr. She's just a freshman, but she hasn't been afraid to step up in there, and the whole Ohio team has really seemed more physical than Miami so far this half. Miami looking for that second goal, a little bit too strong. And that was another freshman. That was Miami's Kat Zalur. She's a freshman from Cleveland, and 
Coach Kramig was telling us this week about how she's the team comedian. She'll tend to just kind of run all over the place, look a little lost and confused, but everyone on Miami thinks she's hilarious. Kramig thinks she's hilarious out there. Goal kick for the Bobcats. They're down a goal, 1-0 here to Miami. Starting to get physical here. A little push in the back by number 12, Sasha Haverchak. As Dingus definitely knew Haverchak was there. Ohio just reminding Miami about the friendly rivalry going on out there. Free kick for the Red Hawks with the right foot. Cleared out, out of bounds. We a throw in back, though, to Miami. Miami, there's Dingus. Dingus trying to create her own space now. Number six, the senior from Smithton, Illinois. I've seen her whip shots in with both of her feet too. Looks like she's pretty confident on either one. She can do about anything she wants with the soccer ball according to her head coach. Bobby Kramig in his 32nd season at Miami, the graduate of Florida Southern. Talked to him before the game. He loves living in Oxford, loves being a part of Miami, Ohio, and he's going to be there for a while. He's still pretty young. Even though he loves Oxford, he was telling me about how, you know, they hadn't been on the road in a month before Friday, and they were he said he was excited for the change of scenery, give his team some more energy, pump it up on the road. Knocked out of bounds, throw in back to Ohio. Headed down near the end line. Great pressure by the Bobcats coming in there hard. You know you're always going to get maximum effort from Molesky. Definitely, she's been stretching the field on both sides. Seems like Ohio just needs to work to keep the ball in bounds. All of their chances have kind of ended it with it rolling out on the sidelines or past the end line. Coming out of the game for Ohio, Liz Finley, who was on to start the second half for Aaron Rodgers. As coming into the game, looks to be number five, Allie Sislo. And Sislo is a player that Aaron thought might even start. Yeah, Sislo sometimes starts on that right mid position. Looks like Finley went out and she came in at left mid for her. She's someone who Roger says has a very strong shot, so that could be why try and get some chances outside that 18-yard box with some power. We showed you that wonderful piece to start the show put together by Jimmer Eckhart. We also heard from him. He's now down on a camera as well, showing his versatility. And he might be bringing you that shot. 28 minutes and change left here in this one. The Bobcats desperate for a goal as they come into this game after their 1-0 win over Ball State on Friday night with a 6-7 record. Meanwhile, Miami with their first tie of the season went two overtimes and walked out of Kent State with a 1-1 draw or 9-2-1. That was a pretty big win for Ohio on Friday as well. Aaron Rodgers said that it was the most complete game they have played all season. One by Miami. Played up top by the Red Hawks. On the turn from Miami, Marble is in. Marble drops it, shot, and right to the waiting arms of Nico Amare, the senior.
Throw in for Ohio. Knocked out of bounds by Miami. It'll be a throw in back to the Bobcats as the Bobcats try to work their way up the field on the far side. Here's the deal, Allie. It just feels like Miami, even when Ohio's been able to get it in the 18, it feels like that back four for them, they've been composed and not giving up anything directly on frame. Right. It seems like they've been playing pretty solid, and even when Ohio has gotten shots off, they haven't been rockets or anything like that. They've been controlled shots from Miami's standpoint. Maybe they have some of that Chicago ESP going on. I don't know. <laughs> That's well said. Three of that back four, and then they're holding midfielder as well from the Chicago area. It's been a pipeline to Red Hawk land for Bobby Kramig. Throw in for Miami. That'll go a foul. Now Ohio can put numbers near the 18. See if the back line can drop it into the 18 here. Free kick opportunity for the Bobcats. Doesn't quite get to the 18. Looked like it popped up for a handball. One back by Ohio nonetheless. Great work by Walter. She has been fantastic this game. Look at Walter run around Bobcat players. Walter has gone 50 yards, now 60, down the right side. This is all Walter back across again, and she will earn a corner kick. Great individual effort right there by Haley Walter. And a corner kick is a great result after that run. You know, when you get those 60 yards, the cross isn't always going to be as sharp as you like it to. So going off an Ohio player, getting a corner kick, that is a prime result for Miami. Corner kick for Miami. Miami keeping that corner kick alive. It'll drop back to Scott who started this corner. Scott down near the end line, sent back across, looking far post. Kept alive, making the run over there. Kat Zalar, number 15. You heard Allie Dosman talk about her qualities a moment ago. Sent too long. It'll be cleaned up here by Zanotti. Zanotti can send it right back where it came from. Over far side, off of Ohio and back to Miami. Ohio hasn't been as able to capitalize on the quick restarts as Miami has. Miami. Into the 18. Trying to make this 2-0. Kept alive by the Red Hawks. They stay with it. Shot far post. It's not on frame. And that will give me a chance to tell you about the 2015 NSCA convention. Registration is now open. George Perry's in the house to talk about it as well. You can go to NSCA.com slash convention. The world's largest soccer show. The MLS draft. The NWSL draft. All of it there. The best clinicians in the world. And that is in Philadelphia. Go to NSCA.com to register now as both coaches, Aaron Rodgers, Bobby Kramig, go into their bench as it's a corner kick for Miami. Corner kick for Scott. She has the only goal of the game. Scott drives it over. Shot. Mishandled there by Amari. Amari had it for a second. And now Miami will miss hit it. We'll take a look at that last opportunity. Ohio really caught a break on that last opportunity. The fact that that was pretty mishandled by Olivia Evans. So there was the shot that led to the corner kick that Miami was not able to get a composed shot off of. Miami looking for more. So dangerous on those last couple corner kicks. And that'll go out of bounds. Thank you. 
Throw in for Miami. Just running. He rolled that. Miami. It's been dangerous here the last two minutes, trying to get that second goal. It's inside the 18. The last two minutes have been all Red Hawks, Red Hawks Alley. Yeah, and that was a great cross in by the forward, Rachel Marble, but Miami wasn't really able to capitalize on it. And you know, Marble, impressive. She has never played forward before in her life, as I said earlier, prior to this spring. But Coach Kramig was just telling us about how she's a natural. Another free kick for Miami as 21 minutes remain in this one. And Miami will snap that out. Ohio's going to really have to work on not giving up free kicks like that or not giving up corner kicks, or they're going to have to step up on the 50-50 balls. It seems like Miami's won every single header. Free kick here now for Ohio. Foul on Miami. This will give Ohio a chance to move black jerseys forward. They need a goal. Big boomy ball for the Bobcats. It'll fall. Molesky will try to get to it. She'll take down not one but two Miami Red Hawks. And there's Scott. Scott with the goal has been outstanding for Miami today. Got a throw in opportunity here for Ohio. Long throw in for the Bobcats. Miami will head it right in front of the goal. Bouncing around. And it'll go out of bounds back to now Miami. That's a perfect opportunity now to go down to the sideline. Kelsey Steele is down there with Mark Doner. Yeah, Mark, of all the cool things and projects you got to do over in Europe, what do you have to say was your absolute favorite? Well, I got to put together a couple of sights and sounds pieces, and just the atmosphere over there was crazy. So in the Netherlands, um, Germany and Belgium were, were by far my favorite. Unfortunately, Germany wasn't able to pull off the win. They drew with Ghana. But uh, Belgium and Amsterdam were definitely the best atmospheres. Just so passionate about the sport, and it was nice to see everybody just, just being that passionate about something. You know, Dean, if anyone hasn't had the chance to tech, check out Mark's uh, projects and sights and sounds, they were incredible. And tell you what, he was a fun guy to work with on the trip. They also have to check out the hair, right, Kels? Oh, man, has he spent some time on that. It looks great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kelsey Steele with the talented Mark Doner, and you can put talented and uber talented in front of all the names here these great kids from ohio university it's been a pleasure getting to know them interviewed close to 50 of them picking 12 and 11 of them were able to go so ali it was really really fantastic great i was really grateful for the opportunity i know we all were between europe and working with you guys today it's been a great experience for us as well it's been a lot of fun today May even go on top of Europe as everybody's been able to get on camera and get behind the camera and do some great work. Really been fantastic. The only tough part is, of course, you guys go to school here and you see your team down a goal right now. Yeah, and we were good luck for every team that we went and saw in Europe, so we were hoping to bring some of this good luck to Ohio today. Well said, but Miami is a very good team. Bobby Kramig has done an amazing job. Let's see what OU can do here. Corner kick. Top of the 18. Here comes Miami. The Bobcats trying to track it down. Miami will check back. Back in again. Cross. Ooh, that almost snuck in. Great work by the Red Hawks. Miami's looked dangerous here the last five minutes. Yeah, they have. That was Grace Campbell for Ohio against her on that 1v1. Shut her down, but it still looked like it could be a dangerous shot, and they still gave up the corner kick. That's where Ohio really needs to clean up on defense because shutting down the initial shot isn't enough when, Ohio, when Miami has been so dominant in the air. Maggie's got the corner kick. 
Corner kick for Miami, far side. Clock continues to roll. Back across. Right in front was Walter. I thought Walter had it. Look at Amari, she was way out. Miami staying pretty dangerous on their chances like that when Ohio isn't able to get the clear on the first on the first kick. Zalar with the cross, looking for Marble. She'll get a piece of it. And she will test Amari. Amari having to use a little bit of her ups back there. She's not too tall, but she was able to bring that one down pretty comfortably. And this will roll out of bounds and come back to Miami. Throw in for Miami. Bobcats. Could this be the opportunity? Good little move, stood up. Referee lets him play. And again, that back line for Miami has been able to answer everything Ohio has thrown at him. Played into space. Running out of speed right there is Weiner, and somehow Weiner is still able to get to it. Weiner will cross it. And Ohio will knock it out of bounds. There it goes. I want to remind everybody, youth clubs and players want to be noticed by the top college programs, and the NSCAA can help. Through its partnership with Elite Tournaments, the NSCA College Showcase is the place to be. Learn more at nsca.com slash events. Miami could score two right here. They may do it, and they do. A brilliant turn there by Weiner. She made that great run earlier, and she gets paid off there, and it's 2 nothing, Miami. And that was a pretty clinical finish by Weiner. She was just able to turn the ball. Let's take a look at the replay. The ball comes in and Weiner just turns it to the left. The left foot hits the back of the right net. Weiner is only a sophomore. She was starting at the beginning of the season, but since has a, so had some hamstring and back issues. She didn't look like she had any, any issues on that play though. Pretty clinical finish, finding the back of the net. Now Ohio's really gonna have to step it up on offense. There's just no looking back. So Ohio, let's see if they can push it right here. So this one, top of the 18. The Bobcats. Sent out here by Ohio. It'll come all the way back to the Ohio goalkeeper, Nicole Amari. Hey, I want um, Billy to do Kate. Because we, we want to have it. We're going to have him interview Kate real quick at the 10 minute mark. Two to nothing for Miami, but with not much from with not much from Dingus, which is pretty surprising because she's been the staple for the Miami offense so far. Yeah, we expected to see fireworks from Dingus, but really the play of number 25, Maggie Scott's been outstanding. I thought Kate Zalar, Kat Zalar has been wonderful as well. And of course, number five, Haley Walter, up and down the flank has really done well for Miami. Ohio looking for any way now to pull a goal back here. They've only got 12 minutes left. And 
And it looks like Ohio made the switch to playing with three forwards up there. You have a couple people trailing up there at the top. Problem is they need to get the ball. Ohio really has been on their heels here in the second half. Miami on top two to nothing. And the Red Hawks continue to have possession. Throw in for Miami. Push from behind, top of the 18, kept alive, and that'll roll out of bounds. Not only is a two to nothing lead harder to come back from, but it's just an energy drainer. Any shot of getting that tie with just flicking one in, you know, is out of the picture, and it's just a big momentum shift in the direction of the Red Hawks. Man, you can feel that, Allie. Well said. You can indeed feel it right now as Ohio perhaps feeling a little bit dejected, particularly because they're having trouble just getting the ball away from Miami. And as that rolls out of bounds, let's go down to Billy Hartman, who is standing by with our photographer extraordinaire, Kate Hiller. Thanks, Dean. Kate, you know, it's sorry to throw you under the bus here. This is going to be a tough question. What was your favorite experience from the European trip? Oh, gosh, Billy, it's so hard to choose, but I have to say working with such a great group of Bobcats, you know, and I'm really glad we can be out here again today for the OU Miami game working together once more. Now, when she wasn't taking pictures, she also created the website scriptsoccer.org that has all of our content from the European soccer experience on there, Dean. Yeah, she was great. Tell her we appreciate it. all she does. I know she didn't want to come on camera, but she did wonderful. Tell her big time. All right. Kate Hiller, as now you've seen every single member of the team that went over to Europe, with the exception of the two seniors, Graham Fragazzi and Grant Smith. And... The only thing we haven't seen is an Ohio goal. And let's see if the last 10 minutes will give us that. That right flank has continued to be the only place that Ohio has been able to get anything done on the offensive side of the field. We're going to do um, the first goal score for Miami, and then we're going to do. The Bobcats. We'll switch it to the right. Back across. Another goal kick here, and you got to figure Miami's going to take their time with nine minutes remaining a 2 nothing lead, Allie Dosman. Yeah, they, I mean, they have no reason not to, and it kind of just seems like their players are jogging around. Hopefully, if Ohio can pull off a goal in the next two minutes, then they have a chance to pump up the momentum for the ending. But as of right now, everyone just kind of seems dragging. Here comes Walter. She has just been spectacular today. A hard tackle, a little bit of frustration there by Celeste Fushimi Carnes. And that will not help Aaron Rodgers' calls at all as the clock continues to roll. And Miami's starting to look comfortably in control of this one with just eight minutes remaining, Allie. Yeah, and there was that replay of Walter getting tripped down. Really the only way they've been able to stop her down that right flank. She's a pretty fast player, and she's really shown that today. Cleared out by Ohio. Ohio needs to get the ball here as Miami. A little bit of death by possession with a 2-0 lead. Starting to head to the corner for Miami was number two, Jenna Weiner, who's got the second goal in this one. And if this score holds, it'll be the fourth game in Four out of five games in the past 
week or the past couple weeks that Miami has won two to nothing, got their own little Joe Cicero thing going on. Yeah, Miami's extremely impressive as they look to go 10-2-1 on the season. And they beat Purdue. They beat Butler. They lost to Northwestern. Beat Louisville, big-time team. Beat IPFW, Marshall, Illinois State. Lost to Eastern Michigan, but then rolled off wins over Bowling Green, Toledo, and Central Michigan. Here come the Bobcats. Can they get that one goal at least? They could get one here in the next two minutes, then that makes those last five minutes super exciting. They've got to get one here, though, I think before the four-minute mark. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a little too much to ask to get two goals in less than that amount of time, especially with how Ohio seemed pretty unorganized in this past 10 minutes. You know, even though they're really fighting for a goal, possession has to be their number one priority because you can't just expect to get a lucky one from a team that's as good as Miami. Yeah, you will not get any gifts from a Bobby Kramig coach team, and we're seeing that here today in Athens. Home to Ohio, taking on Miami, the Battle of the Bricks. It's homecoming weekend. Get the feeling a few people slept in a little bit late today. <laughs> and that'll roll out of bounds. Good opportunity right here. We mentioned these next two minutes here as we approach the five-minute mark. So critical. Let's see if Ohio can do it. Pushing forward for the Bobcats, number 15, Megan Niebuhr, five foot 10. She could be a target here for the Bobcats. And that won't be a target when it's just driven low, that's for sure, Allie. Yeah, you can't have a poor corner like that in such a critical situation. Throw in for Ohio. Crossed again, right in front. Bounces up on the turn. The Bobcats looking dangerous here, showing some urgency. And then, of course, it's cleared by Miami. They'll put it into space, and we've seen the speed of Walter. Look at Walter get to it. Walter stays with it. Tracking back for Ohio is Celeste Fushimi Carnes. She's all over Walter. They'll play on advantage. Top of the 18. Back to Walter, deflected, still loose. Near post, not on frame though by Estes and it'll go out of bounds and boy, I'll tell you what, number five, Haley Walter, the junior has been outstanding. She's just been a gazelle trotting down that sideline with amazing speed and it looked like Miami might be able to pull off another one at that point, but just right out of bounds. Here's a good look at Haley Walter who has been incredible. I also feel like Maggie Scott with that first goal has had a dynamic game as well. Four minutes left here, still no goals for the Bobcats who are looking like they'll move to six and eight on the season. And you know, Dean, you were talking a little bit earlier about how the Miami back line has seemed really organized when you, even when Ohio has had chances, and that's partially due if you look at Shannon Stearns. She's one of the center backs. She was defensive player of the week last week, and then their other center back, Courtney Zanotti. She's a senior captain. Great work by Ohio, pinging it around. That was sent in there perfectly by Feeney. Great ball from Feeney, number seven, to start all of that attack right in front of the goal, but once again, as you mentioned, Miami just so relaxed, able to clear it out. Three minutes and change. The Bobcats desperate for at least one goal. Knocked out of bounds, throw in for Ohio. Got to give Aaron Rodgers team credit here as they have not thrown in the towel. They may get one here. Back across again, but handled by Maniachi. Yeah, Ohio still kept with it, getting some offensive chances near the end of this game. 
largely due to Lexi Molesky. You know, she's just really been a firepower back there. And when you watch her, part of the reason she's so good is she doesn't try to take everyone on 1v1. She seems to really have a good idea of where her teammates are in the field, and she'll take one or two touches and just ping it right back to them. Certainly want to thank Aaron Rodgers for being such a fantastic host here, not just this weekend, but leading up to this game as well. Aaron Rodgers telling us before the game, Obviously his best memory being named the head coach, but also when he played for the Toros professionally, was able to actually play against the Nigeria World Cup team back in 1994, Allie, when you were about one years old. <laughs> but what a thrill. He said they absolutely got bombarded, but afterwards he went up to the coach and said that's the closest I'll ever get to the World Cup. So he's a big personality, Aaron Rodgers. Going to do great things here in Athens. You can count on that, folks. Yeah, definitely. It's, he said that it was the closest he'd ever get to feeling like he was playing in the World Cup. So, you know, that compared to being named Ohio head coach, he said they're on the same level. So that's pretty impressive. Hey, make sure Billy knows he's doing Miami and Kelsey's doing the Ohio player. They got to grab him. Sarah, can you help us get the Ohio Throw in. And Miami push from behind. They'll get that whistle, and that'll just about do it, I do believe, for the Bobcats as Miami will certainly not be in a hurry in these final 70 seconds. You know, going into this game, we were talking about you know, being a little bit worried about the Ohio defensive structure, but on offense, they just haven't been able to get organized enough to put the, goal, the ball in the back of the net. This is going to be their sixth time being shut out out of their eight losses. Ohio, let's see if they've got one last attempt in them. Great shield, kept alive though by the Bobcats. Back across. Miami trying to clear it. Here's Dingus, haven't said her name a whole lot. And she'll clear it long. And Miami will just send it deep here in the final 13 seconds and it's been a thrill to have the Ohio U students here as part of NSCA TV, but the rivals from Oxford, Ohio in the Battle of the Bricks. Miami walks into Athens and they walk out with a 2-0 win. Thanks for letting us be involved with you, Dean. I know that I speak for everyone that we're really thankful for all the experiences that you gave us. And despite Ohio not being able to pull off the victory for us, it's still been a great time. I appreciate that, Allie Doseman. True professionals, each and every one of you. And speaking of professionals, this young Miami team looked very structured today and well done under Bobby Kramig. As we'll talk to a couple players as well. Good opportunity, though, as we get set to talk to a couple of players to tell you about one more time the NSCA convention is around the corner. That'll be in January, once again in Philadelphia. And you can register now by going to nscaa.com slash convention. That'll happen January 14th through the 18th in Philadelphia. Register now. It's the world's largest soccer show. And as NSCA President George Perry told us earlier, you do not want to miss it. And getting set here now, even in a losing effort, one of the star players for Ohio is standing by with Billy Hartman. It's a tough loss for you guys today. What wasn't clicking for you? Um, I think that we had all the right thoughts and we saw all the right passes and everything. It's just um, our energy wasn't there today. People people came out, you know, not ready to play, I, I think including myself. And um, we just didn't put our chances away and we didn't get enough chances on goal. So going forward, you got Bowling Green next. What will be something you have to work on this week in practice to get that win next week and get over that 500 mark in the MAC? I think staying consistent. Um, we come out on Friday and we, you know, we kill it. We do great on Fridays, and then the next, you know, on Sunday we just we're not consistent. And I think that's something that we need to work on is staying consistent. Thanks so much, Alexa, and good luck next week, Dean. All right, thank you so much, Billy Hartman. Appreciate Lexi spending some time with us, even in a losing effort. A fantastic player. And speaking of great players, I thought from the very beginning, including that goal in the 30 in the third minute, Maggie Scott was outstanding, and Kelsey Steele was standing by with Miss Scott. You know, Maggie, you've been battling some injuries this year. How sweet was it to find the back of the net and uh, bring that W back to Oxford? 
Um, it was awesome. I mean, this is a big rivalry, so coming out here and definitely pulling through with a big win, it was awesome. And what do you need to do to uh, keep those winning ways going? Um, I think, well, on Friday we struggled a little bit with Kent. It was a different kind of field and stuff, but we really came here with full energy and we were just ready to go. So. All right, thanks so much. Safe travels back to Oxford. Dean, back to you. All right, great work, Kelsey and Allie Dosman. Your final thoughts here on what Aaron Rodgers is building. Obviously a tough loss, but I get the feeling they'll be back, Allie. Yeah, I think they'll definitely be back, and they'll be back with a vengeance. Maybe if it's not this season, you know, just give him some more time to keep recruiting in his own players. He's There were a handful of freshmen in today that came out with a great show, and so I think going forward, Ohio is going to be just fine. I want to thank George Perry, the president of the NSCAA, Dr. Robert Stewart, the director of the EW Scripps School of Journalism, and all of the OU crew, Allie Dosman up here, Billy Hartman, our host, Kelsey Steele on the sideline, Justin Holbrook setting the table, Jimmer Eckhart doing a great job as our executive producer, Mark Doner, Kellen Winslow, Kate Hiller, and Stephanie Lynn Gort. That was the first goal of the game scored by the woman we just heard from right there, Maggie Scott. They would add another one as the Battle of the Bricks goes to Miami with the second goal solidified there by Jenna Weiner. It was Miami 2, Ohio 0. And guess what, folks? You saw it all right here on NSCAA-TV.